Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground is brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. So today, this is a really special, unique day. It's called International Day. So twice a summer, early in July and early in August, we have what's called International Day at Waldsee, the German language village. As you can see behind me, the, the beautiful uh, Bahnhof, um, which is a train station, actually. That means train station in German. Um, and so what happens is all the villages that are currently in session have gathered and are having like a huge international celebration. So what happens is we have a lot of simulations, like a World Cup soccer tournament. We're doing a, a chef showdown, like kind of in the style of Iron Chef, an international film festival. Festival. And right now, actually, you hear uh, behind me a lot of the villages are showcasing their pride. And so we have several villages here today. If this were just a regular day of camp, they'd be in their village. But today is when everybody kind of comes together. And we focus on a different theme every year. It's really neat to be able to have that community come together twice a summer. My name is Tzvi Geffen and I am the village program representative for Concordia Language Villages. So what I do is I market um, our fabulous programs uh, to basically the whole country and by extension the world. What we do here is a very, very special, unique program. We have language immersion camps in 15 different languages. And so what language immersion means is it's not just the language, but actually the culture as well. So a youth um, between the ages of seven or 18 can come to one of these language villages, mostly in Bemidji and the north woods of Minnesota, and just be completely immersed in a different language and culture as if they're living abroad in a different country. So a lot of the things that they learn is not just the language because what happens is right when they get to the site, it's actually like going to another country. They go through customs and right away the counselors and the staff will be speaking the target language. So let's say, for example, the kid wants to go to Waldsee, the German language village. Um, they'll, they'll arrive and right away the counselors will have their, their table um, speaking German. And um, so the kid learns immediately how to, be, uh, how to use their language and cultural skills in the real world. So right there you kind of establish that. It's a different kind of program, not just a regular American American summer camp. So when they go through customs, that's when they get their cabin, and it's very important that they choose a different name. So for example, my name is Tzvi, but in Spanish my name would be Eduardo. Um, and the reason for that is, you know, having a new identity really allows people to open up a little more and really um, open their mind to having a different culture and mentality. <laughs> During their time here, spent at the villages, they'll be doing any number of activities that would be culturally authentic. So for example, at the German village, they do a lot of archery, they do a lot of bicycling, things that you'd actually see in German, as well as singing and dancing is a huge thing across the board for our 15 languages. Let's dance! International Day is a wonderful celebration of uh, cultures and language, bringing all the language voters that are in session together for a big festival of uh, singing, dancing, cultural games, uh, including an art show from the villagers who participated in the sessions. There's a global summit where the villagers today are discussing minority languages around the world and how they should be treated or protected or not. So that's a big part of it. So it's a full spectrum of uh, academic discussions as well as some fun and play and food, of course, from around the world. It's an event that's open to the public, so anybody can attend. We invite everybody in. We provide shuttles from the town hall. It's open to the public and it's free. So, except for the food, you gotta pay for that. I'm Martin Grefe, the director for the programs that happen at the Concordia Language Builders here in Bemidji during the academic year. So, we have school group programs, programs for adults, family programs right here on Turtle Lake throughout the year. At Concordia Language Builders, you know, around the meals, for example, the, the students sit with native speakers and they learn the eating culture, be it a French meal that might take an hour and a half, two hours. He, he, even here with eight, 12 year olds at Concordia Language Builders, we find ways to make a meal authentically French. So that's all part of that language learning experience at Concordia Language Builders. It's really rich and deep and, and meaningful and really something you can't get anywhere else. We even say often that going abroad doesn't give you the same sense of the culture if you go with a school group, for example. Because here you have one counselor, one teacher for every four or five students. So you don't have that in a classroom setting. You don't get that when you go to, to France. You don't get that, we get that when you go to Russia or Korea. Uh, because 
people are living their life and they're busy. They're not focused on you and teaching you about their language and culture necessarily. What I feel is really amazing about the language villages that the public may not know is that it's really the best way as using a, a, a stepping stone, kind of a stepping stone to really using your language and cultural skills um, in an abroad situation. Um, so when, you know, for example, if somebody chooses to go to the German language village for five years and then they, they have that confidence after going for five summers, you know, maybe two weeks every summer, they can actually go to Germany and use those skills because the language is used all day, every day, um, including meal times, including you know dancing. You sing in that language. You make friends in that language. You do everything in the target language. And I think it really um, is such a practical use because it, that's how uh, one really learns and acquires a language and culture is by using it with immersion, by using it every day, all day. Why is it important to learn other languages and cultures? And that's a really important question and key question because often people say well everybody speaks English anyway when I go to Norway and try to to practice my Norwegian on people they'll respond to me in Norwegian but what happens also is that they know you've tried to make that connection and um, obviously when you're in a restaurant like my, my children who were at Skukfjorden as villagers when we went to Norway and we're in this little um, uh, 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 park area with a, with a Norwegian waffle stand they were practicing the Norwegian with the people there who responded also to them in Norwegian and who were just couldn't believe uh, the accent that they had, how authentic it sounded, and that there are Americans who are doing this. Learning languages is not just for the sake of communicating in that language. Learning a language really also connects you to that culture. I mean, people ask me often, what language should my child learn? I often say, I usually say, it doesn't really matter. Unless you have a personal connection to it already, from a heritage standpoint or because you host an exchange student or something, uh, it doesn't really matter because once you start learning that language, you start making connection to the people of that language, who speak that language as a first language. Uh, and once you make that connection to people, then you'll make a connection to the, to the country itself, to the traditions, to the history, to the, to the uh, culture, uh, you know, to eating culture, everything. So, so learning a language is much more than just learning a language. And it's important uh, because you can't really make a deep, meaningful connection to a people until you start understanding how they think. And you can't do that until you uh, start learning the language. Because there's ways of expression ways of expressions in every language that give you an insights as to how people think and why they express themselves a certain way. There's a deep cultural connection that really you don't get even if you uh, do online courses, those kind of things. At the language world, we live the language. A language and culture are related. Um, I feel very strongly that um, they're two, uh, they go as a cohesive unit. Without one, you can't really grasp the other. Think about if you're, you, you're learning um, the really important aspects of language, such as grammar, uh, writing, and reading, but you, you aren't really branching out as to why um, or when to use it or why language may be a certain way. Um, for example, you know, I lived in Argentina for a few years. Um, I studied Spanish for many years before uh, coming before going there but I really it took living there to really understand the culture um, they had different dialect they had a different way of, of looking at things um, much different than than you would really assume uh, before really getting to know it so I feel like living um, the, the cultural elements in the language is absolutely vital for understanding the whole picture and it's learning by also movement uh, we're very 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 big on dancing and singing at the language villages um, just totally incorporating that kind of thing in our methodologies so you wouldn't believe what a transformation two weeks can make for a kid. My example with this program, I went to the Chinese language village way back in 1998. Uh, I was an eighth grader. I had not spoken one word of Chinese ever. I didn't know anything about the culture. I get there and it's all Chinese immersion and it's unbelievable how quickly I picked up on not only the culture but the language. And I was able to after that appreciate so much that I could appreciate culture by living within it instead of admiring it kind of from far away. That was an amazing transformation that took place for me. If you're thinking about a program like this, a lot of questions may arise, and one of them, people might perceive it as being like a summer school. And it really isn't a summer school. Although a lot of language learning does take place, a ton of learning, um, the, really the idea is that it's fun. It's summer camp and it's outside. And kids who come here will continually say they come because it's fun. They come because they make friends from all over the world. And they come to, to make a real community that's special because it's in this place and it's with these people. And it's an incredibly rewarding program um, for a lot of people. 
to have that experience because people may think yeah, if it's a summer program maybe and it's involving language you're going to be in a classroom and absolutely not. There are times during the day where we focus on just the language, doing little language groups or for a credit program for example where kids can come and get credit for an entire year of a language class, um, they, they do like a, a credit program uh, where they do have kind of the, uh, what I would call the closest thing to a class. <laughs> Uh, the program itself is really is, uh, immerses the students, any participant, any age. And we do adult programs, we do family programs, and the residential programs in the summer, of course. But it immerses every student, every participant who comes here. We call them villagers in the language, in a way where they experience situations throughout the day where there's a need to speak the language. So we don't have sheets, worksheets, where they just practice certain things, but we create situations, be it around a meal, be it on a walk through the woods, be it in an arts and crafts activity, be it on a board game that's authentic to that culture. There's a need to know a certain language terms that go with that. And so it isn't just language without context, it's always language in a context. And so we often talk about content-based instruction, uh, really authentic pedagogy that goes along with it. It's a camp, so it might feel a little informal, but there's no doubt, and research has actually shown that, that the results of the Concordia Language Villages approach are real and are academic and can compete with other, uh, other teaching environments. Uh, and we've uh, begun now to actually uh, also uh, offer courses for government agencies within the U.S. government, for military, uh, for corporations, and they all realize that the world is shrinking. And one of the tools that you need in order to be able to live in a society that we have today is to be able to communicate uh, with people from other parts of the world in almost any job that, that they might come across. Be it, be it a warehouse worker at Lowe's in North Carolina or uh, somebody here in Bemidji who might uh, work with a visitor from, uh, from different parts of the world. So what this really does for the area of Bemidji, how this helps to promote the Northwoods of Minnesota, is that this is such a unique program that doesn't exist anywhere else in the United States. And yet, tucked away in the Northwoods, you've got these culturally authentic language villages that are here, and people are literally coming from around the world, all 50 states and many, many different countries, including you know our staff and several villagers. They come from everywhere, and it really helps the local economy because a lot of the parents like to, to come, and the kid will take advantage of a day camp. There's an option not to have it residential and uh, parents will stay in the uh, local resort and be able to drop off their kids, you know, have the kids out of their hair during the, <laughs> during the day. So the annual economic impact of Concordia language villages on the Bemidji community is about $10 million and that's through payroll, through operational expenses, utilities, telephone, uh, LP gas, at Lucan's, at Target, but it's all, we do again as much locally as we can. And of course construction. We have a $40 million facility here and that's been built with local construction crews and local supplies as much as possible. Concordia Language Villages was originally um, the idea of a professor from Concordia College in Moorhead, Minnesota. His name was Gerard Huckabo, and he was a German professor. Now the famous story is that he was on a fishing trip and he was asking his fellow German professor, how can we make this program where they really feel practical, they really feel like they're living the language, um, you know, and, and having it set up for a future where you could actually use it in the different culture and country. And so they came up with this very unique idea. Um, and it took a while to actually get the land grant and everything to purchase this land. Um, so throughout the 60s, it was really a, you know, a long process of, of uh, getting the land, the college, um, it, with the idea of building these villages around Turtle River Lake. Uh, Concordia Language Builders started in 1961, and obviously with some discussions before that. And the founder of Concordia Language Builders was a professor of education at Concordia College in Moorhead at the time. And he had just returned from being a principal of an army dependent school in uh, Germany. And so as a principal of the school, his whole family was with him in Germany at the time, and he uh, observed how his kids were able to interact with the children in the neighborhood and able to learn the language very easily on the playground, deciding who gets a swing next, uh, who is on a teeter-totter, those kind of things, who is it. And of course, for adults, for him and his wife and other adults in the group, he, he, it was much more difficult to pick up the language and to make the connection to the German people at the time. So he came back uh, to his role at Concordia and he had this idea of merging the idea of a camp with the camping tradition that's so strong in the United States with this idea of a language immersion environment. And so, so the language camps were born, Concordia language camps. When they found the property here on Turtle River Lake, the realtor was actually Alden Kittleson, a local uh, realtor who had uh, grown up in the area, who was very excited about the idea of a second college being part of the Bemidji community. 
And so uh, the, the property that he had identified as, as, as a top prospect for Concordia College was, uh, or is this property here, was owned by uh, the Batchelders who run the woolen mills in Bemidji. And so they were very generous in what they were offering as a sales price. They sold over 800 acres for just $50,000, which even in 1966 was a very generous offer and, and a gift really to, to Concordia College. And we're very grateful for having built that relationship. And that's probably the beginning of a really strong relationship between Concordia language voters and the Bemidji community. That's always been uh, a key part to who we are here in Bemidji, that we, make, that we keep that connection, that we employ local people uh, throughout the academic year, about 55 people uh, in our food service area, facilities, maintenance area, um, in the offices, the program development, and so on. So it's, the Bemidji connection is really important to us. We pride ourselves in buying as much as we can locally as well. The generosity of the batch holders in, in, in offering this property for sale for just $50,000 obviously had a huge ripple effect over time. Uh, like I said, we have 55 employees now who are all living in Bemidji, who all contribute to the economy, are in schools, are on church councils, are on township councils, and so on. So there is a lot of you know, involvement in the community just by the people who are employed here. And I think, obviously, a Concordia language world, the draw that it has from around the world, really, brings over a thousand staff from around the world to us, to Bemidji, every year. So a lot of the signatures in the guest book at the information center down by Paul and Babe are from people who come to visit Concordia language villages and it's really from all over the world. And so it really brought the world in a way to Bemidji and in, as a, in return again we want to uh, bring uh, Bemidji to the world. I mean there's people around the world who really think of their home in the United States being Bemidji, Minnesota, even though they live in Korea, they might live in, in Italy or in Argentina. Bemidji is you know, their home in the United States because of Concordia language builders. And because, that's really the ripple effect of what the Batchelders in the end accomplished. You know, if they anticipated that or not, I don't know, because the villages were much smaller then, of course. But obviously, um, we make a big deal out of making sure that our families know that Bemidji woolen mills exist. And I know Bill Batchelder tells me frequently that on a given Saturday morning, there are 70, 80 customers uh, in the store, specifically after picking up their kids at Concordia Language Villages. In addition to the economic impact, I think it's really important to know that as you build the, the relationship with the community, we've also really focused on making sure that children from Bemidji have access to this program. And uh, about 12 years ago, we started the Bemidji Area Advisory Council, and out of that came the idea of day camps. So we have day camps that run parallel to our regular residential programs. A good number of those children are from Bemidji area families, or people visiting as tourists in the Bemidji area, actually. So, um, and beyond that, we now hold an annual, through this volunteer group, this Bemidji Area Friends of Concordia Language Builders group, we hold an annual essay contest for area fourth and fifth graders. And we invite over 1,500 students every year to participate in the essay contest. We get about 130, 140 responses. And out of those, we can sponsor about 15, 16 one-week scholarships, fully paid scholarships, specifically for fourth and fifth graders from Bemidji. We try to pitch it to an early age because the earlier you learn a language, the, or start learning a language, the better you become at it over time. So Bemidji is, uh, it ties in with what I said earlier about us wanting to, be, wanting to be part of the community and making the connection to the Bemidji community, even though we are a global, uh, globally minded and uh, organization. But Bemidji is really important to us and, and we want this to be also a program that, uh, that appeals to Bemidjiites. If you enjoyed this segment of Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground, consider making a contribution at lptv.org. If you have segment ideas pertaining to North Central Minnesota, contact us at legacy at lptv.org. Ground is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund by the vote of the people on November 4, 2008.